Hello, everyone. Welcome to Vinyasa Flow. My name is Michelle Chua. For this practice, you will specifically need a strap, and hopefully you have one in which you can make a loop out of the ones that have a buckle like a belt. Uh, and then you'll want to have two yoga blocks, standard size, maybe a blanket to sit on or a pillow. And let's begin in hero's pose. And that's where you place your knees on the floor in front of you, point your toes back. And if you'd like some uh, support for your knees, you can place a blanket to sit on in between the ankles or a block between the ankles, elevating your pelvis. So here are some, a couple of succinct quotes. One is by Pema Chodron, mindfulness teacher. And she says, everything is in process, everything every tree, every blade of grass, all the animals, insects, human beings, buildings, the animate and inanimate is always changing moment to moment. And this one is from De Sk Skildkrit, who wrote Morning Altars, wonderful book, highly recommend it if you're into mindfulness and art in nature. And he said, impermanence arrives to teach us to deliciously, unabashedly, brokenheartedly fall in love with what is here right now, because that's all we have. What I've come to understand is how the practice of releasing and letting go is just as important as the practice of building and growing. And the true art of living is to get good at being curious, limber, fearless, and even joyful in the presence of change, in the presence of life. So here's another reminder of that first limb practice of yoga called aparigraha, non-attachment. And in our physical practice today, we're going to encourage letting things move through us that are no longer nourishing us. And that's through physical spinal twists. So let's begin. Sit in a way that you can feel your left and right sitting bones rooting down into the surface below as you lift up from the bottom of your spine to your crown. Rest your hands in a way that helps you to bring more attention to how you feel in your body. Maybe close the eyes. Now let's bring that curiosity into feeling the sensations as they are right now. Feeling the breath just as it is right now. I'm bringing awareness to your inner life, how you feel in your mind and emotional state. Invite the breath to deepen, inhaling slowly through your nose. And exhaling slowly through your mouth. A few more times on your own. Feeling the shoulders, let them roll back and down, opening the collarbones more broadly, lifting up through the back of your skull as you parallel your chin to the earth. Finding a slight engagement in your lower belly to lift up the lower spine as you press the pelvis down. So is there anything in your life right now in which you're looking to practice non-attachment, a parigraha? Is there some change that's happening that you could remind yourself that all is impermanent and to find some value within that process of change? Perhaps you join your palms together at your heart as you clarify an intention for this practice, your sankalpa or personal prayer. And one way that we practice a parigraha here is to dedicate the fruits of our practice to someone or something else. So is there somebody or something that you care about to offer this practice to today? Let's prepare to chant three ohms together, remembering to honor the silence that pause after each ohm 
the om itself is a celebration of beginnings as we begin with the ah the sustaining the ooh the maintenance of life processes and the mm, the culmination of chapters in life chapters and events and cycles and then there's a pause a moment to reflect and absorb so inhale deeply for the first of three Slide the palms down to your left and right walls of your rib cage. Invite the breath to expand your side ribs, your back ribs, your front ribs, and all the way down to the pit of your belly. Filling it up like a bellow or an accordion as you exhale just as deeply. Feel the muscles between the ribs relax. Feel the belly soften towards the spine. Still sit up tall, relax the shoulders. So now equal in breath, equal out breath in depth and length. We're going to begin a breathing technique that helps to energize and help to clear the clouds of the mind. It's called bellows breath or bhastrika pranayama. So it's a deep inhale through the nose and deep exhale through the nose. And there's a physical movement that helps to get us energized as well. And that's where you bend the elbows apart at the height of your shoulders, make fists out of your hands. And as you breathe in, straighten the arms up, spread the fingers wide. And as you breathe out, bend the elbows apart and refist the hands, sort of like this. So let's give it a try and I'll invite you to count your own breaths, counting 60 breaths, and then we'll relax after 60. So prepare to count your own 60. Bellows breath or Bhastrika Pranayama. Ready? Begin. When you finish at your own pace, relax, breathe naturally, and pause and observe how you feel. And let's slow the breath down, continue to breathing with the lips closed, so just through the nose, add a gentle whisper to your breath by softly narrowing or constricting the back of your throat. So use that sound to help keep track of the quality of your breathing, that it's slow and balanced in and out, and that you are breathing mindfully. It's called ujjayi pranayama or victorious breathing. So keep that sound going as you reach for your strap and let's make a loop 
on your strap using the buckle or tying it if you don't have a buckle in which the loop has the diameter of your shoulders width. So if you stretch the loop across the widest part of your chest from shoulder head to shoulder head, that's how wide you want the strap to stretch. So that if you stick your upper arms into the strap, the area that's just above your elbows and you try to pull the strap apart, the strap won't allow you to splay your elbows wider apart than your shoulders distance. And then once you have that loop, go ahead and put it aside and let's lie down on our backs. Coming down onto the floor, bend your knees into your chest. And as you bend the knees, excuse me, Luke, spread your arms apart like a T, wide apart on the floor, Stack your knees right above your hips. Bring the knees together, the feet together. And in the shape, making a tabletop out of your shins. Begin to activate the belly enough so that you shorten the distance between your lower back and the ground without flattening the back to the floor. So keep the belly activated and then activate the muscles in your legs by either flexing or pointing your feet. Keep both shoulders on the ground and let's take a deep breath in. As you exhale, slowly lower your knees to the right side, hovering as close to the ground as you can keep the left shoulder on the floor and without dropping the legs. Then inhale, slowly lift the knees back up to stack over your hips. And exhale, lower the knees to the left to hover as close to the ground as you can keep your right shoulder on the floor. And again, without collapsing the legs. Inhale back to center. Exhale to the right. So we're warming up our twisting muscles called the obliques that lie along the sides of the waist. Inhale center. And exhale to the left. We've got three more on each side. Inhale center. If you want to explore adding rigor, straighten the legs. And exhale to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, right. Inhale, up. Exhale, left. Inhale, center. Last one on each side. Exhale, right. Inhale, center, and exhale, left. Inhale, center, draw your bent knees into your chest and begin to rock and roll forward and back a few times. Oops, excuse me, Luke. So that you can build enough momentum to rock forward onto your hands and knees. And let's take a few rounds of cat-cow here, breathing in as you lift your chest through your arms and look up, cow pose. Breathing out as you press down through the hands, contract the belly, dropping your head to around the back. Inhale again, chest forward, sliding the shoulder blades down the back. Exhaling, lifting your navel, tuck your tailbone under to dome your back. Keep going, three more cycles of breath on your own of cat-cow, Bidalasana. And then relax to a neutral spine and let's grab our strap and our two blocks. Let's place the two blocks at the center of your mat here and you might have to adjust where the blocks are. Stack them on their lowest side across the mat and let's put on the strap right, on, right above your elbows onto your upper arms. Make sure the buckle is not touching your skin. Come down to hands and knees so that your wrists are right under your shoulders, spread the fingers wide and flat, rotate your triceps or outer upper arms towards the back wall so that you spread your shoulder blades across your upper back and move them away from the neck as you look 
at the ground just ahead of your thumbs. So you want to have your lower belly just above the blocks. Let's keep the knees on the floor right under your hips in plank pose. Take a deep breath here. Keep pulling in the belly, sliding the shoulders back. Think of creating a, a long flat back and then exhale, shift forward, bend your elbows and come into Chaturanga Dandasana. So on this first one, you might have to adjust. You might find that the blocks are too high or too low. You might have to situate so that you want the blocks to be able to catch your the area of your lower abdomen and your pubic bone so that you can actually rest kind of in Chaturanga Dandasana so that we can work on the alignment here. So you want to have your elbows bent at 90 degrees stacked right above your wrists. And then lift the front of your shoulders so they're not rounding towards the floor, but draw the shoulder bones back and look at the ground ahead of you to lengthen your neck, the front and back of your neck. Keep breathing. Activate your belly even though you're being supported by the strap and the blocks. And then you might even tuck the toes and straighten the legs and stay here a bit longer. So we want to feel the imprint of an alignment focus Chaturanga Dandasana. Elbows are bent at right angles and stacked directly above your wrists. Navel is engaged, lifting towards the spine. Neck is long as the shoulder blades draw down the back and spread apart. Three more breaths here. If your legs are straight, activate the front muscles of your thighs, your quadriceps, by firming your inner heels towards the back wall. How's the sound of your breath? One more deep breath. Get long through the center line of your body. So your sternum and the crown of your head are stretching actively towards the front wall, your tailbone and your inner heels towards the back wall. And then come down to your knees. Let's put the blocks aside and we'll try some Chaturanga push-ups with a strap. Let's start on the knees. So knees right under the hips, shoulders right above the wrists. Look at the ground just ahead and spread the shoulder blades apart away from the neck. Engage the belly in. Inhale, glide forward as far as you can and don't bend the elbows yet. So go as far forward as you can. When you can anymore, bend the elbows, exhale. Keep pulling in the belly, keep lengthening the neck, shoulders away from the neck. Chaturanga Dandasana, pause here. Inhale, keep lifting the belly in. Elbows are bent 90 degrees right above the wrists. Gaze on the ground ahead, lift the front of the shoulders back. Exhale, press up and glide back to stack your shoulders over your wrists. Let's try that twice more here. Inhale, glide your spine forward. Don't bend the elbows, keep gliding forward. Exhale, bend the elbows 90 degrees to stack right over your wrists. Shoulder blades back, broaden the chest. Inhale, stay here, firm in the belly. Exhale, press up and glide back to plank. All right, one more. Either do it on your knees or with the legs straight, activating the quadriceps by pressing the inner heels back. Start in plank, breathe in. Glide forward as far as you can without bending the elbows. So you're on the very tips of your toes if the legs are straight. Exhale, bend the elbows to Chaturanga. Pause here as you breathe in. Roll the front of the shoulders back, lengthen the neck, pull in the belly. Exhale, lift up and glide back to plank pose. Lower onto your knees. And let's use that strap as you sit on your shins or toes tucked. If you wanna give your Achilles tendons a stretch to come into cow face pose. So raise your left arm as you hold the strap from the left hand, dangling the strap behind you. Use your right hand to roll your left tricep forward and bring the elbow behind your head. Reach the right hand underneath, grab the other end of the strap, and walk your hands as close together as you can, maybe clasping the hands. Hug the bottom of your front ribs towards the back of your body and lift up one vertebra at a time from the bottom up to the crown. Peel the front of your shoulders behind you. And as you lengthen the back of your neck, lightly coil your chest up to your degree. Three more breaths. Exhale. 
exhale, release the arms, and let's switch. Hold the strap if you're going to use it in your right hand, and raise your right hand, dangle the strap behind you. With the help of your left hand, rotate your right tricep forward and bring the elbow behind your head. Reach your left hand behind you underneath, grab the other end of the strap and walk your hands as close together as you can, maybe clasping the hands. Press your shoulder blades down, hug the bottom of your front ribs in, stretch up from the bottom of your spine to your crown. Listen to your breath as you roll the fronts of your shoulders back and lightly coil your chest up. Relaxing your eyes as you might be gazing up, two more deep breaths. And release. Put the strap aside, frame the top of your mat with your blocks and please come to stand at the front of your mat in Uttanasana, which means standing forward fold. Separating your feet at least hips width apart and parallel. Take a moment here to come into your version of forward fold. Maybe it includes moving the spine like a pendulum. Maybe it includes clasping opposite elbows or interlacing the fingers behind the back. A few more deep breaths. Softening your neck, lift the shoulders up and away from it. Now see if you can tilt your weight further forward, maybe bending the knees some more so that you can truly stretch your spine. Press your fingertips either onto blocks or the floor in front of your feet. Activate your belly and inhale, stretch your spine forward parallel to the ground, Ardha Uttanasana, which means half forward fold. Exhale, fold in, Uttanasana. For the breath, sweep your arms forward, inhale, Raise your arms overhead as you rise to stand in Urdhva Hastasana. Create a little back bend and exhale, join your hands at your heart in Padasana. Remember your intention for your practice. Perhaps say it mentally here as we begin to flow to the breath in Surya Namaskar C. Here we go, inhale, sweep your arms forward, roll your shoulders back and down and look up. Exhale, bow over your legs. Place your hands on the floor or on blocks. Inhale, step your left knee back and look up, kneeling lunge. Holding your breath, step to plank pose. Exhale, glide forward as far as you can. Bend your elbows 90 degrees through Chaturanga Dandasana. Then come all the way to the ground. Firm the tops of your feet into the earth. And inhale to Cobra, coiling your chest up. Tuck your toes and pull in the belly as you press up through plank, downward facing dog. Inhale, step your left foot forward beside your left thumb. Lower your back knee and look up. Exhale, step your right foot forward and fold. Inhale, sweep your arms forward. Coil your chest up. Exhale, your hands to meet at your heart. Last one, sun salutation C. Inhale, your arms forward, coil your chest up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, step the right knee back, look up, kneeling lunge. Holding your breath, step into plank pose. Exhale, keep the belly lifted, glide forward, don't bend the elbows yet. Then Chaturanga Dandasana. This time Cobra or flip the toes from Chaturanga and come into upward facing dog, breathing in. Exhale, contract your belly to lift your hips back, downward facing dog. Inhale, step your right foot forward beside your right thumb. Lower your back knee and look up. Exhale, step your left foot forward and fold. Inhale, sweep your arms forward, rise into a gentle standing back bend. Exhale, your palms to meet at your heart. Let's come into sun salutation A. Breathe in, circle your arms apart, join the palms at the top. Breathe out, bow over your legs. Press the ground or blocks. Inhale, lengthen forward, Ardha Uttanasana. Either step into plank or float lightly into Chaturanga Dandasana, where the elbows are bent. Inhale, Cobra or Upward Facing Dog. Exhale, Downward Facing Dog. 
Give yourself maybe five breaths here if you want to move your body in this downward dog. We'll stay a little bit longer. You might pedal your feet to warm up the backs of your legs or shake out the head. Invite space between your shoulder blades and along the sides of your neck by rolling the triceps down, dropping your head and lifting the shoulders back. And bend your knees, lift your heels and hips high, look past your fingertips. Empty this breath and either walk or lightly jump to the top of your mat, Uttanasana. Inhale, press with the hands, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale again, Uttanasana, forward fold. Root down, inhale, rise up, Urdhva Hastasana, hands overhead. Exhale, Padasana, hands at the heart in mountain pose. Once more, Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, circle your arms, join your palms at the top. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Walk to plank and lower or float to Chaturanga directly. Inhale, Cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three breaths here. So step your, step your feet together to touch in downward dog. Inhale, raise your right leg behind you. And as you exhale, bend the knee towards your nose and round forward into plank, stepping the foot lightly between your hands for warrior two. Spin the back heel down, align front heel to arch of back foot and press through your feet and windmill your arms apart to rise up, opening your arms wide apart where your chest faces your left wall as you gaze just pass your right hand onto one spot. Bend your front knee, optional to bend it 90 degrees for rigor, and press the outside edge of your left foot into the floor as you straighten your left leg. Wrap your right outer hip beneath your body and firm the top of your left thigh bone back as you stack your shoulders right above your hips. Last couple of breaths. Virabhadrasana two. Now keep your arms wide open and straighten your right leg for Trikonasana, triangle. We're going to take the extended version. Glide your hips towards the back wall and reach your right hand towards the front wall, thereby lengthening, not shortening the right side of your torso as you decide where to place the right hand just outside the right calf, maybe on the floor on a block or two block stack. Now raising your left arm, let's create extended triangle by rotating the left tricep to face the left wall. So your pinky finger points at the left wall. Then sweep the left arm overhead, but relax the shoulders down the back. Hug your front ribs in and twist a little bit. Turn your chest slightly to face the sky. Another four breaths here in extended triangle pose or Uttita. Trikonasana. Look at your right foot, lower your hands, step back to downward facing dog. Please bring your feet together there. Downward facing dog. Inhale, raise your left leg back. Exhale, round into plank, bending the knee towards your nose. Softly step the foot between your hands and spin your right heel down, aligning front heel to arch a back foot. Inhale, cartwheel your arms to rise up, arriving at warrior two as you steady your eyes, steady your breath. So bend your front knee right over the heel, maybe 90 degrees, maybe not. Press the outside edge of your right foot into the earth. Roll your left outer hip underneath you and firm the top of your right thigh bone back. Stack your shoulders right above your hips. Last two breaths. Let's straighten the left leg for extended triangle. Glide your hips towards the back wall, reach the left hand towards the front, then place that hand on the left side of your left calf on a block of the floor. Raising your right arm up, rotate the tricep to face your right wall, pinky finger pointing at the right wall. And sweep that arm overhead just to the degree where you can still lengthen your neck by sliding the shoulder blades 
down your back. How's your breathing here? Spiral your chest slightly to face the sky. And here we are for four more breaths, steadying your gaze, your drishti. Gaze down at your left foot. Exhale to downward facing dog. This time, separate your feet hips width apart. Then inhale, raise your right leg, keeping your two hips leveled. As you exhale, keep your shoulders leveled and cross your right knee to tap your left elbow or tricep in plank. Step your right foot beside your right thumb. Spin your back heel down and let's rise up to warrior one. Warrior one, as you bend the front knee just over the heel, scissor the right hip back and press your outer left heel into the ground, spiraling your inner left thigh towards the back wall. Engage your lower belly here and lift the frontal hip bones, dropping the tailbone as you lift tall through your spine. Now stay in warrior one from your belly down to your feet but bend your elbows apart like the shape of a cactus. Lengthen your spine and press the shoulders down as you breathe in. Keep your feet still, your hips facing forward, and now exhale, begin to turn your chest to face the right wall. Inhale, lengthen your spine, keep bending the front knee. Exhale, keep twisting to what's available. Maybe open the arms like a T, last three breaths. So here are those obliques again, those twisting muscles that we're warming up as we twist without using leverage. Relax the shoulders down, lift your spine so you're not tilting towards the front of your mat. And then look forward, let's bring the hands to the hips as you straighten both legs and step the left foot forward about five to six inches shorter stance. Keep your hips facing forward and activate your quadriceps. Keep your right hand on your right hip and raise your left arm up. Breathe in, hug the front ribs in. Exhale, fold forward to parallel your spine to the floor. So with your hips leveled, lower your left hand either on the left side of your front foot on a block of the floor. Or if your balance feels pretty stable and you wanna deepen the twist, Place the left hand on the right side of your front foot. Keep your two hips leveled. Trace your spine down the midline of your mat and send the shoulder blades down your back. With your feet rooted, raise your right arm up and continue to twist in revolved triangle pose. Or in Sanskrit, Parita Trikonasana. Three more deep breaths. Now look down at the floor just ahead of your right foot and let's make our way into supported warrior three. Placing your hands on blocks or the floor about a foot ahead of your right foot. Flex the left toes towards the ground and raise the left leg parallel to the floor. Tack your right outer hip back and stretch the spine forward parallel to the floor. Lift the navel, breathe. Now let's prepare for another twist revolved half moon pose. Keep firming your inner left heel towards the back wall and let that lifted leg feel solid. This is gonna be very helpful in balancing. Place your left hand one foot in front of your right big toe. Use your right thumb and tack the right outer hip back as you stretch down your center line, crown to left heel. Exhale, keep the pelvis leveled and twist to the right, turning your chest. You might raise the right arm up and you're in revolved half moon pose. Harita Arda Chandrasana. Breathe in, lengthen through the center line of your body. Breathe out, hug your outer hips towards the midline and keep twisting two more breaths. Look down at your right foot 
Lower your hands to frame it, step back to plank. Maybe you take a vinyasa here or a moment to rest. Let's meet in downward facing dog. Tune into your breathing. Everything is in process. How are we honoring the stage that we're in in our practice? And how you're feeling in this moment or today? If you're ready from downward dog, keep your hips leveled and inhale, raise your left leg back. Keep your shoulders leveled and exhale, cross the left knee to your right elbow or tricep in plank. Step your left foot beside your left thumb and spin your back heel down. Inhale to rise into Viravadrasana one. Bend your front knee right on top of the heel and scissor your left outer hip back. Straighten your right leg entirely and press your right outer heel into the earth while spinning your inner right thigh towards the back wall. Then activate your lower belly by lifting your frontal hip bones and anchoring your tailbone down as you lift to your crown. Couple more breaths. Now keep your legs still and bend your elbows apart like a cactus shape, drawing the shoulders down, but lifting from the bottom of the spine to the crown, breathe in. Keep bending the front knee and exhale, twist to the left while keeping your spine as vertical as possible. Breathe in. Stretch up a little taller, breathe out, keep twisting, and maybe open the arms apart. Three more breaths. Looking forward, bring your hands to your hips and straighten both legs. Step your right foot forward another five or six inches into a shorter stance for revolved triangle. Keep your left hand on your left hip to direct it back as you raise the right arm, ground to your feet, and inhale, lengthen your spine taller. Exhale, bow from your hips, parallel your spine to the earth. Lower the right hand on the right side of your front foot on a block of the floor or to the left side if you wanna go further. Inhale, stretch your spine further. Exhale, twist to the left, raising your left arm. Revolved Triangle Pose. Parita Trikonasana. Three more breaths. So firm your outer hips towards your midline as you stretch the spine from the pelvis. Aiming the crown of your head down the center line of your mat. Send the shoulders down the back. Gaze down at your left toes. Place your hands on blocks of the floor a foot ahead and shift your weight onto your left foot, warrior three with hands down. Lift from the inseam of your right leg and right away flex that foot. Let that lifted leg feel solid as you stretch your torso forward parallel to the floor. Engage the belly, breathe. Now steady your eyes on the ground ahead and let's prepare to twist here. Place your right hand on a block of the floor, one foot in front of your left big toe. Use your left thumb to tack your left outer hip back as you stretch through the right leg and crown, breathe in. Keep your hips leveled and exhale, twist to the left, raise your left arm, revolved half moon. Four more breaths. Parita Arda Chandrasana. Look down in front of your left foot, lower your hands back to frame it and step into plank, maybe a vinyasa or cat cow or child's pose. We'll meet in downward facing duck. Walk or jump lightly to the front of your mat. 
come into your forward fold here, clasping the hands behind your lower back. Breathe in, lift your chest forward, peel the shoulders back, and then exhale, fold, drop the head. Stretch the arms away from your lower back with a slight bend in the elbows to lift your shoulders away from your neck. Three more breaths. Now, release your arms and heel toe the inner edges of the big toes together. Bend your knees together. Let's prepare for twisting chair. Join your hands at your heart and begin as you exhale to twist to the right, tacking the left hip back. Optional to hook the right elbow outside your left thigh, but as you gaze at your knees for a moment, make sure they're in one line, meaning the left knee is not coming forward of the right knee. In so doing, you know that you're not twisting your pelvis and thus keeping your lower back stable or safe. Twist across your waistline. Draw the shoulders down your back. Parita Utkatasana. Last two deep breaths here. Lower your hips, raise your arms, inhale, chair pose. Exhale, rise up, Padasana. Maybe close your eyes and take a deep breath. Sense what feels different in this moment. Feet together, knees together. Inhale, sit back into chair and join your hands at your heart. As you exhale, tack the right hip back and begin to turn your chest to the left. A few more breaths. Keep your knees in one line by twisting at your waistline. Send the shoulders down your back and broaden your chest. One more deep breath. Lower your hips, raise your arms, inhale to center and chair. Exhale, rise up, Padasana again. Deep breath. So, one more twist for the road, and this one is using blocks to help support you as you might attempt an arm balance a twisting crow pose. And you might be surprised at how well you can get into it using the blocks. So place the blocks about a foot or more inward from the front edge of your mat. Lowest height, stack the blocks so they're crossing your mat. And then have a seat with your right hip or not a seat. Come into a squat, like you're coming into the chair twist again. With your right hip, we're gonna place the right hip on top of the block, so the outer hip, and we'll place the hands very close to the blocks here where you can create chaturanga out of your arms, meaning the elbows bend at 90 degrees, remember like we practice with a strap, as if you are in chaturanga facing the front of the mat. So you wanna stretch the spine, keep the knees in one line as much as possible, and then the elbows are gonna create a tabletop here. As you climb your outer thigh onto the blocks, you can slide the heels of the palms back so that your elbows start to catch your outer right knee, outer right hip. And as they catch that area, you can lean into your upper arms like a shelf and begin to lift the feet. Breathing by looking on the floor ahead, you stretch your weight forward. Now, this is twisting crow, but if you straighten your right leg, to the left and you straighten the left leg to the back of your mat, creating L shape out of the legs. That is Ekapada Koninyasana one. Another twisting arm balance. How's your breath? When you're done, come down to sit. Pause a moment, leave the blocks where they are. Maybe roll out the shoulders, maybe roll out the hands, a couple of deep breaths. So we can use these blocks as a little booster, a stepping stool for the outer hips. Let's take side two and see what's there. 
bring that sense of curiosity and play and maybe a little fearlessness like we talked about at the start. So sit on it with your left glute. Bring the feet together as if you're in chair pose. Sit up really tall, so get space in the spine so that you have something to wring out and twist to the left. Place the heels of your palms as close to the blocks as you're able to with the index fingers pointing to the front of your mat. Then start to lean forward so that you bend the elbows into chaturanga, the elbows face the back of the mat. See if you can crawl your left outer hip and your outer left thigh onto your elbows or upper arms. Breathe, gaze on the ground ahead to shift your weight forward. Either keep the knees bent, twisting crow, or straighten the left leg to the right wall, straighten the right leg to the back wall. Ekapada Kuninyasana one. Breathe. And when you're done, come back down to sit. Maybe you rest a hand at your heart center, a hand at your lower belly, and give it a few deep breaths. Sense what's there to notice here right now. And what's there to release right now? To practice non-attachment with a parigraha. Lion's breath, once inhale deeply through your nose, open your mouth and eyes wide, maybe even cross the eyes, stick out the tongue, release any sound. And now let's come down onto our stomachs. Interlace your fingers behind your lower back for bound locust pose, entering our last few back bends. Straighten the legs, bring your knees close together, and parallel your feet as you point your toes. Press your pubic bone into the ground and think of stretching tailbone and heels towards back wall, chest towards front wall, knuckles of your hands towards your heels as you lift everything you can for five to eight breaths. Your count. Shalabhasana, bound locust pose. Find length in the back of your neck so that rather than straining the neck and lifting the chin up, slightly look towards the floor ahead. Lengthen the back of your neck. When you're done, you might make a pillow out of your forearms to rest your forehead on and pigeon toe your feet. Three breaths. Relax. Next back bend is your choice of the same thing, bound locus or bow in which you catch your feet with knees bent. If you're taking bow or danyarasana, slide your knees as close together as you can, bend both knees and catch your outer or inner feet. Press your pubic bone into the ground. Then kick your feet back as you pull them towards you, lifting your knees high, coil your chest up. Count five to 10 breaths. Try to keep your knees no wider apart than your hips distance, as this will offer safety and support for your lower back. Once you've lowered, give yourself three breaths to rest here. We've got two last back bends, so please make your way onto your back, whether you press up and slide the legs in front or just flip over where you are. Let's begin in bridge pose. You may like to use a block and hug the skinny width of it right between your knees and thighs, offering lower back stability and support. Bring your arms down by your sides and locate your heels. Want them where you could almost touch them with your fingertips, but not quite that close. Parallel your feet apart and root down through the four corners of each foot and the backs of your shoulders. Bridge pose. Lift your pelvis up, hug the block, stretch the front of your thighs forward. Activate your hamstrings. Walk the upper arms under your back ribs. Keep your arms straight. 
If your hands meet, maybe interlace the fingers. Tilt your chin slightly back. Give it five to 10 breaths before you lower on your own. Satu Bandha Sarvangasana. Come down, rest for three breaths with your pelvis on the floor and decide what your last back bend is going to be. Bridge pose again on your own, support a bridge with a block under your lower back or upward facing bow, Urdhva Dhanurasana, in which you place your hands alongside your ears, keeping the elbows no wider apart than shoulders distance. Take your last back bend for five to 10 breaths and we'll meet with your pelvis and spine on the floor resting. your pelvis and spine. Inhale deeply through the nose. Open your mouth and sigh it out. <sighs> Once more, breathe in and let it go. <sighs> Lifting your feet, wrap your right leg over the left and scoot your hips towards the right edge of your mat. Open your right arm wide on the floor, ground the shoulder, then lift your feet again and begin a twist to your left. Roll your right outer hip forward. And maybe gaze past the right shoulder. Five breaths here. Gently roll onto your back. Switch the cross of your legs as you center your pelvis. Then scoot your pelvis towards the left edge of your mat. Open your left arm wide, grounding the shoulder. Lift your feet and twist to your right, maybe looking past your left shoulder. Tilt your left outer hip towards the front edge of your mat. Five breaths. Come back to your center, find your way up to sit, bending your knees apart for Baddha Konasana. Soles of your feet together, heels close to your pelvis. Press your pelvis down and lift up to your chest and crown. Breathe in. You exhale, start to bow from your hips. Five breaths. Breathe in, slowly rise up. You may like to turn to face the wide width of your mat as we straddle the legs apart here for a variation of Upavishta Kanasana. Cup the tops of your thighs and roll your inner thighs back to root your sitting bones down. If you find your back tense to round here, you might sit up on a folded blanket. Flex your feet, keep your knees pointing up, not pointing forward and then slightly activate the belly. Lift your frontal hip bones, sit up tall, relax the shoulders down. From your hips, not from your neck, begin to hinge forward. This time, 10 breaths. You might catch your forearms or your forehead with a block or blocks. Mm. 
Remember to keep an open space at your throat and peel the fronts of your shoulders back and down like a tiny cobra pose. When you've finished counting your 10 breaths, walk your hands towards your pelvis, firm in the belly, and lead with your chest as you breathe in to slowly rise up. Catch your outer thighs with your hands, lifting your bent knees, drag your feet towards each other to sit in Dandasana, stick pose. Feet hips width apart, legs straight in front of you. Flex your feet here, and as we prepare to fold forward, you may like to use a strap around the balls of your feet. Might even move the flesh aside from the sitting bones to root them down. Lift the front and back of your spine, drop the shoulders, open your throat. Breathe in. Take your time for 10 breaths as you hinge forward from your hips. Some of you might clasp your big toes and flare the elbows apart. On your next in breath, lift your chest and come up halfway. Roll the fronts of your shoulders back and down and firm in the belly, stretch the lower back. Then exhale, continue to fold with a slight lift in your chest. A little back bend integrated into your forward fold. Paschimottanasana. Press down to your hips, from in your belly, and lead with your chest. Inhale, slowly rise up. Let's start to make our way down to our backs, in which you might take five to ten breaths if you need to add in one last cooling posture, like child um, happy baby pose or lifting the legs in some way. Otherwise. Set yourself up for a comfortable position for a few minutes of corpse pose. Shavasana.
lying here in stillness with eyes closed, breath natural. What's changed in this moment since you first arrived in your practice today? Feel into your physical body. Into the breath. And into your mental and emotional state. Attune to the ebbs and flows of the moment as you begin to move your body very slowly, very gently. Ease into a simple stretch. Maybe turn over to your right side, resting your head on your arm, pausing a moment to bring mindfulness into your transition. And as you feel ready, press your hands into the ground, lift your torso, your head last, and find a comfortable way to sit in which you can feel grounded, open, relaxed, and alert. Rest your hands in a way that will invite concentration as we sit for five minutes in meditation. Practicing anchoring our attention on to one point of focus. Maybe it's a part of your body in which you feel the breath naturally flowing, or maybe it's a physical sensation that is sustained and you can connect to. Or maybe you're gazing at a one point of focus. And in these five minutes, as we've already begun, notice what arises. through sounds around you, through sensations in your body that might change, through feelings that might surface or thoughts that may appear. Can you treat all of those things that arise as simply events that are impermanent? Let them come and go as you bring your awareness back to your point of focus, the object of your meditation.
And begin to expand your awareness from that object of focus to your physical body again and to the space that is around you where you are practicing. You might join your palms to meet at your heart and think of one thing that you appreciate as you sit here in this moment. As we practice moving through change from one posture to another with a sense of awareness and balance and ease, how do we bring that practice of balance and clarity as we move through changes in our lives, practicing a parigraha? Recall that intention that you set at the beginning of this practice. Maybe say it mentally a couple more times. And remember to whom or what you dedicated this practice to. See them enjoying the fruits of it. And together, let's close with one chant of Om. Take a deep breath. The light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste. Namaste.